Jingle bell, 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 bell. are having an amazing day today hello so for today's video we are doing the compliment of yesterday's video and we are going to be doing the worst makeup of 2020 I almost said 2017 <laughs> what am I doing as much as I love filming best and worst videos I do like filming worst videos just because I feel like it's fun to talk about makeup that like doesn't work sometimes it's fun to give tips on what might not be worth your coin and I also love it because I feel like the comment section turns into people telling me their worst makeup of 2020 and I love knowing what not to waste my money on so we're just gonna jump right into it today there are a few things that I don't actually have in my collection anymore that I tried throughout this year that I just didn't like so I decluttered it but I recently decluttered and film it I'm sorry <laughs> I was like a very spur of the moment 3 a.m. declutter but I recently decluttered a lot of makeup and before I went to go drop it off to my friend I was like let me go through this bag and find bad makeup obviously so I found a bunch of stuff that is going to be decluttered but I haven't decluttered it yet so without further ado Let's jump right into the worst makeup of 2020. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, the first thing I want to talk about is skincare. It's just one thing of skincare. I don't talk about skincare too, too often on my channel just because I am frankly not qualified. Um, I don't know enough about ingredients. I can give you recommendations on what will make your skin very soft, and that's about it. But I did have to talk about the e.l.f. Super Tone. Um, it's a toner with brightening fruit acids, and it's kind of like a daily gentle exfoliating. I bought it because I'd heard really really good things about the elf skincare products and I love finding affordable skincare because skincare is something you have to rebuy pretty frequently especially if you really love a product if I can find something that's affordable and works really well I'm going for it this however I tried once and I literally could not try it again I can't tell you if it works or not because I cannot get over how absolutely foul this product smells. It smells like a baby's diaper. And I used to work at daycare and I worked in the baby room so I know what that smells like. This literally smells like a baby's diaper. It smells so, so bad that it is impossible to put on your skin. I don't, does anybody use this and like, like the smell? I don't know if I'm just very sensitive to it and my nose is just not picking up what it's putting down. I know it says it has fruits in it so I'm wondering if the fruits are what create that kind of sour disgusting smell but something about this oh my god even smelling it now it just smells so incredibly bad and also it just did the fact that it's super super fragranced in general definitely is a red flag for me I watch Hiram um <laughs> <laughs> my hair catches on fire. Um, oh, candle of the day! The candle of the day is Matcha Business from Forever Mood, which is Jackie Anna's candle company. I really like this one. So yeah, I don't know if this works or not, but I wouldn't buy it just because I don't think you could put it on your skin without gagging because the smell is so horrible. Um, so that's that on that. Next, let's, and this is really in no particular order, but I did want to talk about this palette from NARS. This is the NARS Ignited Palette. I actually have a few NARS palettes, and I actually enjoy some of them. This one is not one I could get behind, and I'm very sad because when I saw the pictures of this palette, I was so excited because I just thought it looked so pretty. I loved this because I thought the pink and neutral color story was really gorgeous. I was very excited about it. I will say the mattes in this palette, which there are three mattes, actually perform really well. I actually really enjoy the NARS matte formula. But unfortunately for me, the mattes in this palette are few and far between. And for the most part, it's these shimmers. And this shimmer formula is one of the worst shimmer formulas that I have tried in 2020, especially coming in a palette. These shimmers, I hate even touching them. They are so dry so patchy the glitter like starts at one point and then there's no pigment behind it and then you have a little pigment but then you don't have glitter they look really beautiful in the pan they just don't have any sort of like pop or like wow factor to them they are so incredibly dry which in turn makes them kind of difficult and weird to work with and apply I find that if I use a brush to pat on these shimmers which typically for dry shimmers is what I would use as a brush if I use a brush the glitter just like falls down leaving this weird sort of 
shimmery mess on my eyes, but it doesn't have glitter. It's just shimmer. Also, a lot of these shades look like they should be duochromes, but because the glitter is so separated and so finicky, you don't get any of that duochrome finish on your actual eyelids. You only get this like weird, it's the only way I can describe it, weird like random specks of glitter in between shimmery powder. It's very weird. It's a very strange formula. I'm very picky about glitters in general. I really have specific ones that I love and I have specific formulas that I love, but this one went above and beyond to not just being one I'm like, mm, not great. This is like bad. And all of the palette besides three shades is this shimmer formula that is just so incredibly bad. So definitely a disappointment with this one. Packaging's cute though. So 10 out of 10 on that, but the actual formula, no. <laughs> Next, speaking of really horrible and disappointing formulas, I want to talk about this year's Pat McGrath quads. So last year, Pat McGrath came out with these holiday quads, and one of the quads is actually one of my favorite little palettes ever. It's like the maroon and copper palette that came out. I'll put a picture of it. I love that quad. So when she came out with quads again this year, I was like, ooh. <laughs> I'm interested because I really liked the ones from last year. I really have to just point this out. I know that this is nitpicky, but the packaging on them already, when I picked up the Christmas quad from this year versus last year's, the packaging is different. Like the weighting of the packaging is different, and this one feels a little bit more not so cheap, whereas this one, the plastic feels a lot cheaper. And that is nitpicky. I wouldn't care about that if it wasn't for the fact that this shadow quality is poor. It's poor and bad. I also feel it's important to mention that this palette, I, I got it, right? Like I got it and I opened it. The shade just freaking falls out. <laughs> First time using it, shade falls out. $65 shade falls out isn't glued down properly anyway that's another like okay i can look past it that would piss me off but i'll look past it the formula on these is bad not one of these shades is any sort of like transformative shade which sometimes she does do quads that don't have those she didn't last year but apparently this year that's the thing she's just not doing her transformative beautiful amazing shades that make the brand worth it anymore i don't know why but i would be like okay like they're not the transformative shades but i actually enjoy her other shadows still like even if they're not the transformative ones they're still pretty and they still perform nicely <laughs> not these ones. This palette is arguably the worst because you have these two weird satin shades that do nothing. Their purpose is nothing. This matte is pretty. It works well. But this shimmer shade, which is supposed to be kind of the bam, this is like the star of the quad, is so incredibly dry and patchy and lacks any sort of real pigment. It almost is honestly comparable to the NARS palette I just talked about, except the glitters are at least a little bit closer together. It's dry. It's patchy. It's hard to apply and it looks horrible on the eyelid. And it's the same thing with this one. These two mattes perform okay. They perform like normal Pat McGrath mattes. This shimmer right here is a satin shimmer that it's not horrible, but it's not great. This shimmer up here is even worse than the other one in terms of being dry and patchy and having very little pigment and not showing up super well. These look like little faint... <laughs> faint little shimmers and when you try to apply them on the eye they just don't show up because it's so hard to get them to be opaque enough that they show through because they're so sheer and patchy. I was very disappointed with these. I was already disappointed with the Pat McGrath Holiday Palette, and I'm even more disappointed in these quads than I thought I was going to be, which actually kind of stinks because I normally really like Pat McGrath stuff, but yeah, was not impressed by these and definitely was not a fan. I'm, I almost, it, it's bad because when it's something like Pat McGrath, you're like, did I get, to, did I just get a dud? Or are, is it just a dud palette for me? Like, did I mess up? But no, I didn't. The, it just doesn't perform well and they're not worth the money. I hated everything I got from the Pat McGrath holiday collection. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. I, I just want to say, packaging wise, a trillion out of 10. The budget that they cut for the quad packaging they put into this, it is heavy. This is like a brick. Like I could use this as a paper. What's that thing? A paper holder that people put on desks for decoration. You know what I'm talking about? How they have little like rocks or gemstones that you use to hold down papers. You could absolutely use this as like a paper thingy. Um, it's super weighted. It's bougie. Like it's an experience to open up. It feels bougie. The actual highlighter itself just isn't good. Again, dry. It's just so incredibly dry and it looks dry on the skin. It's sad because I feel like when you look at it in this, it looks so reflective and glowy and beautiful. But the second you take it out of this setting and apply it to the skin, it just looks so 
crusty is the best word that I can use. I love a highlighter that is like wet and dewy and those tend to be a little bit less firmly pressed to find a highlighter like that. If you like harder pressed highlighters that tend to be a little bit more, I don't want to say baked because this definitely isn't a baked formula. If you like harder pressed highlighters that tend to be a little bit more like scratchy almost, I think you would like this one. But I personally like highlighters that don't look as drying. I don't know if it's just my skin type or what, but if there's a drying type of formula on my skin, it just looks like that highlighter look <laughs> where it's like instead of looking glowy and luminous, it just looks like there's a strip of sparkly powder instead of like meshing into the skin and giving that really dewy look. Um, I was really sad about this because I was so excited. I thought the color was beautiful. It's like, and it's still, I do think the color is beautiful, but if you liked this color, honestly, I mentioned this in my favorites video yesterday, but if you like this color highlighter and you were interested in this, I would would just go ahead and get the Milk Flex Highlighter and Lit because that is a beautiful formula for half the price and it has a very similar color to this one. Very disappointed. Maybe I'll save this as a paperweight. <laughs> I was so sad about this. I was so excited. The next couple products I'm going to talk about, when you're talking about cream products, it is very much a preference situation. Personally, I did not like, after multiple uses, the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzers. I liked them when they first came out on first try. I didn't mind them. But after using them multiple times, I do just think there are better cream bronzers that came out literally at like the same time that this one did. A great example is there's one from Tarte that's a cream bronzer that came out right around the same time as the Fenty cream bronzer. That is beautiful. It works so, so well. It's so creamy. It blends so easily. You don't have to work really hard to blend it out. And when you put something on the skin, it's easy to diffuse. That was my biggest problem with this, is that I found it was very, very difficult to diffuse once you put product on. If you're going for a more intense, like harsh, sort of contour or bronze. I don't think this is a bad product, but for me, I like stuff that's a little bit more subtle and a little bit more blended and subdued, and I couldn't really achieve that with this product. I also found that I was spending way more time blending this out than other cream products that I love and use, and overall, I was just really disappointed in this product. I also found that for me personally, and this could have been user error, because I'll admit, like, I'm not like the most amazing at applying makeup, but I will say I found that even when I could blended out. It definitely was a tiny bit patchy, specifically in places like my cheekbones. I felt like I couldn't get an even coverage with this, and maybe it was just because I was trying too hard to blend it in. Like, it could have been user error totally, but for me, this was not an easy product to use, and I found that uh, sometimes it would look okay, and other times it wouldn't, but anytime it took way too long to use and apply, and I have other cream bronzers that don't do that, so fortunately, this wasn't my worst. I love the powder bronzer, but this was a no-go. Another product that I love the powder version, but I hated this version, is the Patrick Ta Do We Know Her uh, Duo. So what this is, is it has a cream blush and then you have a powder blush. And I hate the cream blush. <laughs> I hate it so much. Similarly to what I was saying with the Fenty, it just feels like it takes way too long to blend out and diffuse this product. I actually really like the powder side and I will continue to use that. In my opinion, I love the powdered blushes from Patrick Ta so much that I just don't see the point in buying a duo like this when you could just buy a powdered blush and it work beautifully and be like an amazing formula. I think the big problem I have with this is it's definitely a little bit more oil-based, the cream blush, and also I find that you can use like a teeny bit and make it a little bit more subtle, but I do find it's just not pigmented enough, almost. I feel like sometimes cream blushes are almost too pigmented, like the Rare Beauty cream blushes are almost like too pigmented, whereas this, it's not really pigmented enough until you've done like your second layer and then it's too much. Like it's very hard to find the perfect amount to put on your skin. I have heard using them together does help, and I've tried that a couple of times, but honestly, again, like it's just not worth the effort when there are other cream blushes that I have that I really really enjoy that don't apply like this. I have one, I can't remember what it's called, I have it's from a K-Beauty brand that I got this year that is a similar consistency to this where it's kind of a balm like cream blush that I absolutely adore because it's so easy to find that perfect consistency, it's so easy to find that perfect application, and I just don't get that with this. I don't know if this would have made worst of 2020 had there not been an all powder counterpart that I was absolutely obsessed with, but I just feel like it's important to note that if you're gonna buy one of the Patrick Ta blushes, I really would recommend instead of buying the duo, just buying 
one of the matte powder blushes because they just work 10 times better in my opinion. Okay, last thing before we move to things I don't physically have. You knew this was coming. I hate it. <laughs> the ColourPop Candyland collection. Oh my god, the Candy Castle. I didn't like the entire collection, but the palette specifically, I just have a huge gripe with. Normally I really enjoy products from ColourPop. I've actually talked about in my ColourPop reviews how boring I feel the reviews are because the formula is so consistently good that I never really have a lot of negative things to say about the brand. This palette gave me a lot of negative things to say about ColourPop and their palettes. First of all, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it brief because I've mentioned this in so many videos about how much I hate it. But first of all, the fact that they missed this opportunity to create this amazing Candyland collection and like this is what we got absolutely devastates me. Second of all, the fact that there is little micro glitter in almost every single matte infuriates me. I know the brands sometimes do that because it makes shadows more blendable. I'll tell you what, these aren't blendable. They blend into nothing. This shade, this shade, this shade, and this shade kind of this shade but a little bit. These like main shades that make the palette interesting, the green, the yellow, and that like really frosty light pink, literally blend into nothing. Uh, they don't work on my skin tone. I cannot imagine how they would look on anyone that's even slightly deeper than me. I think you would have to be the fairest of all fair to make this work on you, and even then I'm not sure, because they really truly blend into absolute nothing. Overall, worst palette ColourPop put out this year. I think it is truly so bad. It was like one of my least favorite palettes that came out this year, one of the least favorite things that I tried. I hated it so much. Trash. It's going in the trash. No, I'm just kidding. Not going in the trash, but. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is actually another palette and that is the ABH Carly by Bell palette. I didn't have this in my collection for a super long time. I bought it on a whim because it was on sale and I was like okay like let's try it. I have to say I, I think the downfall of this palette really at the end of the day was just how boring it was and how uninspiring the formula was. I don't know why Anastasia decided to release all of those palettes that they did last year but I will say this one out of all of them was definitely the worst. I still have and adore the Jackie Ina palette and I didn't mind the Alyssa Edwards or the Amrezy. I didn't mind all of those palettes. This Carly by Bell palette in particular, they used that shimmer formula that they used in Subculture and Prism that was kind of this gel-like shimmer that ends up looking really flaky and chunky and kind of flakes off of the eyes. Mattes, again, suffered from that kind of Subculture formula of being really overly powdery, and I found that with Subculture that actually works for some people because it makes them hyperpigmented, but I found with this palette, because the colors were so so muted, they lacked a lot of pigment, and making them so powdery kind of just made them blend into nothing. I also think overall the color story on this was just so incredibly uninspired, and while you could easily create like a basic look, it wasn't something that needed to be marketed as like a $45 eyeshadow palette because there was nothing inherently special about that palette. So on top of it not being super special in color story, the f which I can, you know, get over because I'm a basic person, <laughs> the actual formula performed horribly, so not a fan. Next, we have the Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid, like, Duo Chrome. I hated these. They were so bad. I already decluttered them because I literally was so disappointed. These were so expensive. They're so tiny. They're, like, this little nuggets. They're, like, this big. They're so small, which I can look past if the formula is, like, dope, but it wasn't. They kind of reminded me of the Sila Shimmer and Glow formula, which I actively dislike. It's, like, a material metallic formula, which just doesn't transfer as well as something like the Glitter and Glow formula where you have the glitter. I've realized that more metallic and chrome looking shadows just haven't really been able to transfer in the same way that the glitter formula does with that kind of concept. The Chromium collection was no exception. It really went on one color and looked one color. There wasn't this magical, amazing duo chromeness. It also settled really, really heavily into my fine lines and creases or in my eyes. I don't have the most perfect like, smooth eyelids. So it settled into that texture in a kind of a gross way and just ended up ruining the makeup looks that I tried them on. I don't think they looked good and I would say don't waste your money because <laughs> these things were so expensive and they were just trash, like did not work well. Final thing for my worst makeup of 2020 is the CoverGirl Clean and Fresh Foundation. They came out with this foundation at the beginning of the year, I think. I remember I got a huge PR package with like everything from that collection in it and I was really excited at first until I tried it and then I was like woof. Um, no, it was so bad. This foundation was probably one of the worst foundations I tried this year. It truly was so 
how do I even describe it? Because it was weird. It's separated on your skin, but like the moment you put it on your skin. You know how sometimes foundations, if you wear them for a long time, they start to separate? This was like you put it on and it was like or Dawn dish soap on oil on your face and everything split apart and separated into nothing. It gave a very scaly like texture to the skin that was so unflattering. If you wanted to try to put other products on top of that, I mean, good luck because you couldn't. It was impossible to put other products on top of that because it just made the sort of separation and scaliness and pilling even worse. It was supposed to be somewhat of a light to medium coverage foundation and it definitely was light in the sense that in certain parts of your face you didn't look like you were wearing any foundation <laughs> because it just went <laughs> everywhere. I hated that foundation. Ugh, so bad. And that is going to be everything, the worst makeup of 2020 for me. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, happy Glomus. Thank you for being here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, including my Glomus merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with links to get informed and get involved about the Georgia Senate runoff races that are happening on January 5th. Very important. Stay informed, stay involved. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!